mini game video. This time we're learning how to hurdle out hurdle a dragon. So without any further ado, let's dive in. All right, as always, let's start with a demo. Um. Oh, a patron, welcome to the arcade. We offer a lot of random crap here and two ways to enjoy it. One, free play, no story, but you can play all the games without worrying about tickets and story mode. Er, story mode is not implemented, so we're just gonna use this one. So let's head over to our arcade cabinet. Now, as soon as I jump into this game, it's gonna start because I haven't fully implemented it as a game inside a game yet. It's just kind of a demo of it. So it's gonna be kind of chaotic, but um, not actually. Let's save here so we don't have to uh, go through that again, but yeah, let's play it. I need to slow that dragon now. Yep, thrusting you. Hard to find the right speed for a dragon, you know? But anyways, I lost. The dragon beat me here. Alright, so that's... Let's try that again with me winning. Which I'm gonna cheat to do because I don't feel like going all the way around. Yay, I win! <laughs> That's just... The difference is just the text box. Um, as I said, this isn't really optimized to be a game inside of a game yet. It's just the basic minigame form. So anyways, let's break down how it works. There are, you can't see my hand. I am holding up a six with my hand. You can't see it. <laughs> anyways, uh, there are six different event types in here. So there's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So this one, which I'm gonna slow down to normal, is the dragon. This is what you're racing against. It has a custom route, which is the entire map. I just traced it out and have it follow that. All right, that's it, basic. Uh, the jump events, these are actually triggered by uh, the action button. So it's not, this isn't a check for a button. This is when you hit the action button, when on these very specific tiles, you'll jump. So this doesn't allow jumping anywhere. It's just, you can jump from a very specific spot. And which is just done with a move root jump. And yeah, that's how that's done. And that's how every single one of these jump routes is. It's just a different X or Y jump. Uh, this is if you win. Uh, sorry, if you lose. This is only active if you lose. So actually, let me pull up these. All right, region. Use them. They're very, very useful. There's so many of them for a reason. Um, so here, if you touch down here, that will be... Uh, if the dragon gets there first, you'll lose. So if the region for the dragon racer, I just called them racer, it's a dragon, equals three, you will lose. Now, you may be thinking, oh, but what happens if I win? This happens if you win. If the switch player win is on, you win. And now that, that and both you and the racers winning and losing is controlled by these two events right here. So this is a continuous loop using labels. Um, here it gets the location info on the player, sets it to the player region, uh, region ID based on that. And then if racer, racer region equals three, then it turns player one off. Uh, that was a redundant thing just in case something should break and it turns on early. That was just me basically covering my backside. Um, <laughs> anyways, this one is checking the racers at, uh, so get same thing, location info, except for it's to racer region, and it's set to dragon instead of player. Um, if player region equals three, it turns player region on, and else it turns it off. Uh, so this is what turns a player win on when you get there before the dragon. Uh, if the dragon is there before you, then before this event can even run, these events down here trigger that you lose. So yeah. That is how the basic version of this works. Now, there are many different things you could add into this. You could make it so the jump isn't triggered by events, but it's rather triggered by you 
um, pressing a button, so it would be need to be a parallel event with a loop, um, where it would just be conditional branch if button XYZ is pressed, or if you have a plugin that allows more button, you could do this here. I always like to do is triggered because that just seems to work better for me. And then uh, wait, then jump to label. I named it loop, right? Yeah, I'm pretty sure I named it loop. I did. Then here it would be jump. So here you would have to have more conditional branches based on where is actor. Character is facing down. Jump. Then it would have to be a uh, control player movement player jump. I think down is negative, right? No, sorry, negative Y, not negative X. What am I thinking? The player. Oh, really? That. Not okay. That's never made sense to me. Okay. So if the player is facing down, they'll jump that way. And uh, you would ha do one for all of the directions. <clears throat> Goodness, sorry. But you would also have to add in uh, region restrictions along the edge of the map. You would want to use the same one you used down here. You'd want to use a different one. I just accidentally clicked the same one. So, and have it so that if the player is going to land on any of these, you'd want to fill in the entire outside area with it, then it won't let them jump. So I figured it was just less of a pain in the butt to uh, just use the actual event. Sorry, the sun went away outside and I just realized I don't have a light on in my room because now it's dark. <laughs> um, anyways, uh, the other things you could do with this, too, is you could add in more racers. Uh, you could have it so there's little traps you can throw out to delay them, make it a full Mario Kart thing. It is completely up to you. This is just the base you can build all of those ideas from. So, anyways, if y'all want to stay tuned in on the arcade, click the playlist that's appearing somewhere on the screen. And until next... Until the next video, I'll see you then. Bye-bye!